one message, zero tabs, full compromise. Your phone, your photos, your mic, your camera, even the keys to your email and bank apps. Gone the instant a WhatsApp message lands in your phone. No link to click, no file to open, just a silent break-in. This is a real zero-click exploit, patched only recently. This is not the first WhatsApp vulnerability and certainly it will not be the last. In the next few minutes, I will show you what happened, who's actually in the crosshairs and the five moves you need to make right now to stay secure. To keep this sane, this was targeted, not a mass mayhem. If you are a journalist, activist, public figure, or you just value privacy, you will want to watch to the end. Here's the snapshot. WhatsApp fixed a flaw in its app Apple ecosystem apps that let a malicious message execute code in the moment it arrived. Attackers chained it with an Apple OS bug to drop spyware without you touching a thing. The campaigns we have seen so far are going after high-value targets. But if you haven't updated yet, you are at risk. And attackers only need you to be just one update behind. So what is zero click? It's a code that runs the second your device parses a message before you even see it and even without you tapping anything. Think of it like getting a letter that sprays sleeping gas the instant your mailbox opens. Nobody inside your house had to twist a knob. That's why I never click suspicious links doesn't save you anymore. And yes, this class of attack is very real, white, surgical, and devastating. Here's how this attack chain actually worked at high level. A hostile WhatsApp message lands on your iPhone or Mac. You never touch it. As soon as mobile ingests the packet, the linked device sync routine kicks in to keep your phone and desktop in step. The exploit writes the truty. A crafted sync record nudges WhatsApp to auto-retrieve and parse a resource from an attacker-controlled URL. Again, no UI, no prompt. That fished object isn't random. It's a shaped target parser on Apple platforms that auto-processes media or meta on arrival. Image, GIF, font, or container. The moment the framework sniffs the file type, a bounce or logic bug flips into memory corruption. The result? Code execution inside the WhatsApp process without a tab. From there, the implant runs with the app's entitlements. On iOS, that means sandboxed but potent. Read your chats, scrap files WhatsApp can access, harvest authentication tokens from app storage, and write background, refresh, or push notifications to stay alive. With an additional privilege escalation stage, often the second bug in the chain, the payload can invoke mic or camera, pull broader files, and persist more reliably. On macOS, the same chain lands in the desktop client, which usually has a wider file system view and easier persistence via login items or agent P lists. So next, it starts collecting easy, high-value data. Your WhatsApp chats and media it can reach, your contact and recent call, notification texts, which can include OTPs, login tokens stored by apps. These can open your emails, social or bank application sessions without passwords. If the attacker wants live access, they can turn on the mic or camera for short periods. They usually do this when the screen is unlocked and the device is on Wi-Fi so it looks normal. If the attacker also uses a second bug to get more power, they may read more files, grab some keychain items and make the spyware start automatically after restart. This is stronger on Mac than on iPhone. When it sends the data out, it does not upload big files at once. It sends a small encrypted chunks. It prefers Wi-Fi. If there is no internet, 
it waits and tries later. This keeps battery drain and data use low and avoids drawing attention. With the tokens it is stole, the attacker often signs in to your other accounts from their own computers. That can mean reading your email, your cloud drive, or any app that keeps you logged in for a long time. If your cloud backups are reachable, they may pull those instead of touching the device again. The spyware also tries to stay safe. So if the phone reboots or crashes, it restarts quietly if it can. If updates or resets happens, it may stop talking for a while. If things look risky, it may remove itself. As I told, this is surgical, not spam. So operators pre-select a short list, send tailored messages that look ordinary and cap infections to keep noise down. The goal isn't ransom, it's silent access. Who actually gets targeted? People with leverage or data value, journalists, activists, lawyers, opposition figures, executives, researchers, and sometimes those around them, assistants, family, suppliers, etc. Independent labs have verified campaigns this year that match this profile, zero-click delivery, dual bag chains, short-lived implants, tight target sets. So what would you notice? Usually nothing. Two real-world signals occasionally surface. Platform-level threat notifications warning of a sophisticated attack and rare direct notices from WhatsApp to a small subset of users when abuse is detected. Beyond that, artifacts are subtle. Unexpected linked devices, odd background network chatter, or permission prompts out of context. But modern spyware works hard to leave no reliable fingerprints. Bottom line for you, if you are not high risk, you reduce your exposure the same way. Keep operating system and WhatsApp auto-updated, prune linked devices, disable unknown previews where possible, minimize app permissions, and treat apps as parsing engines that must be hardened continuously because the next zero click will look different but work the same way content in code out if you like this video please like share and subscribe it would be great help